Good evening, everyone. It is Friday, June 5th, 2015. Yes, I have a new screen title, uh, thanks to my friend, who I will dub Orbital Unisuit. He also goes by various other monikers. and uh, not sure if he wants me to share them, but you know who you are. Uh, you know... You, you know, someone also said, you You know, I'm just quoting someone verbatim. Uh, you look like an autistic piece of shite. So I guess that's another nickname moniker for him. But I'd like to thank him for making this uh, uh, Nam's new podcast uh, screen uh, card for me. Uh, a lot better than the one I had <laughs> made out of uh, paint. But uh, yeah, this is very cool. Some personal things, some things on the personal level. Uh, my father just celebrated his 57th birthday yesterday. Happy, uh, happy belated birthday, Dad. I already called you, but I love you. Uh, you know, it's because of you and Mom uh, that, uh, you know, I'm the person I am today. Whether, um, I mean, maybe I'm not a billionaire, but, you know, hey, I'm trying. And, you know, I, I always... I, I've always said I wanted to be the half the man my father is, and if I'm if I'm lucky enough to to, to fulfill that, uh, I I know I will be a success in life, and, and no matter in, in any field, no matter what I do. Um, and in a couple of weeks, my parents' anniversary will be coming up. They will be have been married for thirty two years, or no, thirty one years. Excuse me. They've known each other though for thirty two years. Uh, their anniversary falls on June 23rd, so, um, you know, it's a big month for them, and then you have Father's Day as well, so yeah, Dad, you, you're really spoiled this month, this month, uh, so, you know, happy birthday, you're gonna have Father's Day, you and Mom have always, uh, really, it seems like you really planned this out for the three of us kids. I mean, mom's birthday is at the end of April, the very last day of April, April 30th. And then like the week after it's mother's day. And then your birthday comes at the beginning of June. And then it's father's day. And then like a week after that, it's your guys' anniversary. <laughs> so, I mean, they really get, uh, the, my brother and my sister and I back for, you know, you know, having this fork out, you know, just some, birthday money and uh, you know some birthday cards <laughs> i love my parents though. they're the best uh, i couldn't ask for better parents uh, even though you know there have been times that uh you know i wasn't the greatest son but you know what through it all that i couldn't ask for better parents and and a better father i couldn't ask for you know you know he sacrificed so much to give you know my brother and my sister and i you know so much and you know and uh, my mom gave us a childhood, too. I mean, she was a stay-at-home mom, and, you know, I didn't have to go to a babysitter's. I, you know, and speaking of summer, you know, my mom, because of her staying at home, I got to stay at home and, you know, make memories. And summer, didn't have to go to someone else's or go away anywhere. I got to make summer memories, play around the neighborhood with some friends. So, you know, thanks to both my parents. So... You know, I just reflect back, you know, the kids, you know, getting done with the school year, just always thinking back, you know, what I'd be doing. My brother and I usually hung out with each other. My sister was off among her friends, but, you know, uh, like the third week of June, we would go on our family vacation. That was always something we look forward to, and, and those are memories that I'll always cherish with my family. And uh, when we went back to our uh my childhood vacation spot in August of 2013. I mean, it was just paradise for me. I mean, that, that for me was just, uh, so peaceful and the, I couldn't ask for anything better. It was, like I said, it was just paradise. I, I it was, uh, all my worries were put to put aside. It was just so nice and relaxing to have my family there. It just felt like I, I, I literally felt like it was 20 years I really felt at the time when it was 2013, I really literally felt it was 1993. I was four years old with my family. I really, yeah. So I really just felt like I went back through a time, uh, you know, a time machine and, you know, got to experience being a child again in my childhood. Anytime I go back there though, it's, it's always a, it's always a pleasure. Wildwood, New Jersey. I love it. Um, uh, so, uh, but uh, going on some national news now, we got Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner now. Um, I, I guess we're supposed to, uh, you know, 
pat her on the back and applaud her for her bravery or his bravery or their bravery. I mean, I, it's, but hey, by all means, if you want to have a sex change, have at it. I mean, do I think it's heroic? Well, no, maybe I'm politically incorrect saying that. Uh, I mean, do I support their person's choice? Sure, I do. I mean, that's not my life. And I don't, condem I don't condemn a person. But I just think it's, you know, I just don't think someone is a hero. I mean, it's just, just like that Jazz Jenny. I made a video about Jazz Jennings. I just, how the hell can Jazz Jennings, who supposedly have a... Uh, gender or sex identity issues at the age of four I, that had to have been put in by her parents now look at jazz jane she's i feel she's just being paraded around by her parents uh now she's got she's a spokesperson for johnson johnson and uh is apparently gonna have her own reality show on tlc says so much for today's television and you know and then bruce jenner uh becoming a female now it's just a sex reassignment or i'm sorry to sound politically incorrect well really i'm not because i mean like i said the thing is i don't care if that's what they want to if that's what he wants to end up doing become a woman i just don't think it really needs to be a big deal because you know if someone wants to do that then hey whatever more power to them uh it's not my cup of tea i'm fine with how i am supposedly it's a uh, actual mental disorder to have those kind of, you know, thoughts in your brain and, you know, whether it's a, a chemical imbalance, I don't know, but, uh, you know, whatever, you know, it is what it is, but, you know, I think more, more people, and I, I'm not, now that's not to say that there isn't people, you know, you know, being rather harsh probably through the uh, social media about it, but I think more so people are just sick of hearing about it and, you know, don't really give a shit. And that there's more people, other people who deserve to have the title being heroic than Bruce Jenner. But, uh, I mean, sure, she, he or she can be an advocate for transgender and just, you know, hey, it's, I did it, so can you. And I was uh, an Olympic medalist, so, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, in, speaking of politically correctness, I just found out that the game Hangman is actually not being called that in school anymore. I heard it's being, like, I don't know, like, uh, where I work at with, I work with kids, and uh, they were playing Hangman today, but they they preferred it as Humpty Dumpty instead. I guess schools are doing away with Hangman. I, I this Boy, this political correctness is just run amok, huh? I just, just shook my head and just went, wow. I always refer to it as Hangman because that's how I know it. I didn't ever, you know, because I, I didn't take it as to mean it to be literally as hanging, you know, to hang a man or as a message, to, you know, as, as, a, as a negative message or something. I just, just that's how the game was. And I just remember, like, the first computer my dad ever got us, our family, uh, us kids to play on, and that was one of the games that came on. The computer was Hangman. And, uh, you know, so... In 26 years of my life, I've known as that game, and I'll continue to call it by that uh, name. Uh, in the sports world, we got, you know, the Stanley Cup underway. Unfortunately, I thought Game 2 was tonight, but it's actually tomorrow night, I heard. Uh, but nonetheless, Game 1, the Tampa Bay Lightning led for 52 minutes by a score of one nothing, and then the Blackhawks had a little rally there and got two goals in like a few a couple minutes span and won the game uh, i don't want the blackhawks to win but i, I think they're gonna win i i like i said i mean i like patrick kane and i'm a, I'm a big fan of him uh you, you gotta give you gotta give credit though to the players like jonathan Taos, patrick kane and it's nice actually he's anton vermette i always thought he was an underrated third third line center guy it's nice to see and he got one uh one of the goals scored there and you know i it's nice to see a player like that but you know the blackhawks have won two stanley cups in the past uh five seasons uh you know so it's just unless it was my team the penguins yeah ha, ha, ha. uh and also it just goes to debate that their two stars patrick kane and jonathan towels are better than Sidney Crosby and McGinney Malkin. And 
So you can make the argument, well, you know, they were in a, they won their second cup in a strike shortened season. But if they win the cup this time, they'll have three all together. And it's like, well, you know, that kind of solidifies it. So, you know, that's kind of another reason why I'm not I don't want the Blackhawks to win. Uh, sorry, Blackhawks fans call me a bitter asshole. Um, I don't mean anything personal. Of it. I mean, I love the players. You know, I respect their ability. Like I said, I'm a big Patrick Kane fan. But I just don't want them to win. I just don't want them, to, you know, because I mean, I, I'll have to. I like, hey, Blackhawk fans, I'll be willing to admit your guys are at least under, you know, as a team, are better than us. Um, individually, I don't know how you measure someone um, neck and neck, really. But uh, I mean, guys like Jonathan Taus and Patrick Kane have stepped it up. Marion Hosa, it was so funny because, you know, he got we got him at the Penguins got him at the trade li- deadline in two thousand eight, and we went to the Stanley Cup final, lost in g- Game Six. We offered him a seven year deal, and he rejected it to sign a one year deal with the the, the Red Wings because you know he thought he'd have a good quick chance to win a Stanley Cup, and he didn't want to. Uh, he, he wanted the Stanley Cup, I guess, and he just wanted it. He, he thought he had a better chance with Detroit, and so that was the story there. And then they re-met in the finals the following year, and, you know, it was it was sweet revenge to, get Ho- to beat Hosa, you know, and someone put a YouTube video together, you know, marrying Hosa, like the... Uh, uh, they Sometimes the campaigns of what they do every year for the Stanley Cup and... um. Is this in two thousand nine? It was. The, is this the year? And like they showed, uh, the Penguins pitcher of, uh, Sidney Crosby comes out of the of the pitcher and he says, uh, this is a tough one getting in the close to the cup, and uh, not winning it or something. And then you know he at the end he looks at the background and everything. He goes, I never want to be in this photograph again. And the person edited it to, uh, and they focused it on. Uh, they focused away from. Really, that's what the original video is. The the person who redid the video, they did a, uh, they focused on Marion Hosa, but with uh, Sidney Crosby's voice in the background. But they focused it on Marion Hosa, and then after it was done, the song by the Rolling Stones, "You Can't Always Get What You Want," uh, and with everything, uh, with Marion Hosa, it showed him, you know, just in complete disgust again. You know, he picked the wrong side, and uh, he. You know, and it was it was just beautiful, and I just remember people in the crowds in the streets were chanting "fuck you, Hosa," "fuck you, Hosa" after we had beaten them. But uh, next year, the following year, the Blackhawks won, and Hosa had signed the free agent deal with the Blackhawks, and he finally got his cup. Then he got a second cup in 2013, and he's probably well on his way getting his third cup. So it's it's almost looking like it, the joke's back on us. But wow, what a what a whole, you know. Just a big storyline there, and now how what it's become, and how it's all unfolded to this day. And uh, um, I think, I mean, the, the Lightning are definitely uh, talented offensively, very much so. I think they can win at least two games, but I, I just think the balance that the Blackhawks have is might be just too hard to overcome. Uh, but we'll see. I mean. The Lightning have home ice, but, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Ben Bishop, though, has been wet, better on the road than on, at home. Uh, his goals allowed average, or goals against average. Uh, but, I mean, he didn't play that bad of a game. He just, you know, the Blackhawks caught fire late, and, uh, you know, we'll see what goes on from there. Uh, in the NBA Finals, we have you know, the Golden State Warriors up one game to nothing. And it looks like it's going to be LeBron's going to have to do it all himself. Kyrie and Irving, uh, something with his kneecap. Uh, he's going to be out three to four months. So he's already lost Kevin Love, and now he's without Kyrie Irving. Now it's LeBron James all by himself. Uh, I wasn't the biggest LeBron James fan. I already had mentioned this in the previous podcast because of just how he went to, about to get his two championships. Had he stayed in Cleveland, it would have been a different story for me. And sometimes it's his fans more so than him, though. But... I really would like to see Cleveland win because the the city of Cleveland has not had a championship in, oh, how many years has it been now? 50, 60 years? And I'm a Cleveland Indians fan, so I sympathize with the city of Cleveland. I can understand their pain and frustrations to go, uh, without a, to go that long of a drought without a title for the city. 
trust me, I was heartbroken back in 1997, as I already mentioned in my previous podcast. Oh, God, boy. It was just, you know, I was just numb the next morning when I woke up and they found that they had lost and they blew their 2 nothing lead against the Florida Marlins, now the Miami Marlins, but, oh, it was numb. I just, I just didn't know what to do. I was just in disbelief. Just, just like, this really sucks. I mean, sure, it's just sports, but, you know, your sports team, you know, you represent. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, supposedly, if you're getting mock and what, those damn trade rumors are him not being happy. I, I don't see him leaving Pittsburgh. Uh, but supposedly, um, Mary Lemieux and uh, Burkle, I believe the other owner, is looking to sell some part of the uh, the, the team. But they, even if they sell it, they still want to have some sort of uh, part of ownership, I guess. So I'm not sure if they're selling it uh, like all 100% away. But, you know, they might just want to give some duty to other people. So that might, uh, you know, turn a, a player away and just make them feel uncomfortable, you know, with change, you know. So I, I can understand that. It's just like anything, you know, change, you're uncertain about things. You just don't know how things are going to be. And when a uh, situation like that, when you don't know what's going on, it really causes, it can cause for some stress and anxiety. Trust me, I... I've already been there and done that and already discussed that and I'll probably discuss it in future podcasts, but oh man, uh, what else is going on? I mean, the Cleveland Indians are starting to finally climb back the near the 500 level. The pitching's coming around. Uh, yeah, if you're in the background, well, what, I mean, I, I mean, I have been going through again, more anxiety back on a personal, uh, I just, I have my trip tomorrow. I'm heading out to Washington State to see my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephew. And, you know, I'm excited for that. But, you know, also a little nervous for that. Um, Got to make sure, you know, once I get off the plane at my, uh, the destination is to get, also get, you know, go ask, hey, where do I get my luggage? And then ask the information, you know, to make sure I get on the right flight. And I'm a little stressed about that now that it's actually come i mean i wasn't a i wasn't a few weeks ago i didn't think anything about it you know but now it's like well you know the day's here and i gotta do some of this information i don't want to screw it up you know i just don't want to end up in you know oregon when i'm supposed to be in the state of washington you know or the wrong city by you know wrong city wrong state i don't want to have any of those deals uh I mean, I, I should be fine, but it's, it's, yeah, that's been, I, I, I think secretly probably weighing on my mind. I'm not worried about the flight at all. I mean, I've flown before, but it, even though it was 14 years ago, I'm not worried about that. I'm more like worried just about get make sure I get the everything right and, you know, process my information and everything I need to have done to get it right. And, uh, you know, cause I want to see my sister and my family and, you know, I don't get to see her that much. So, I mean, I love my sister. Uh, shout out to her, and uh, I'm excited to go out there. Uh, uh, then I guess I, uh, you know, you know, going back and then you know, work is also causing me stress. But I mean, not not putting anyone down. I just, I just feel sometimes with work, sometimes your coworkers or your boss can be unorganized, but that's to be expected. So, I mean, I feel in like, if they're unorganized, I'm unorganized and I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just saying, so I, I can imagine if I'm feeling anxiety, I can only imagine that what my coworkers or my boss is feeling. Then, uh, it's maybe it's just, it's just as bad, if not worse. So, uh, I mean, I'm not, I, I, I just know you're doing, I mean, you're trying to do 10 different things at once and it's like, holy crap. But, you know, that's just, you, it's, it's all in how you handle it. You just got to realize not to beat yourself up too much. Um, it's one thing I'm still trying to learn, uh, day in and day out how to handle. I mean, I'm trying to learn more, just read, reading books on psychology. I just like to read about mine, how people react in some certain situations if they have, uh, you know, mental conditions, you know, that just, I'm talking about anxiety and, uh, any of those type of disorders. And, uh, it's, it's tough. And I, I mean, my anxiety, I had a, a little minor anxiety attack the other night and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to have anyone feel sorry for me. I'm just trying to, you know, anyone out there that might be listening or, you know, that has anxiety, just trying to relate to them. You know, you're not alone. Uh, I certainly f just 
feel like crap though when I have these uh, bouts of anxiety, and uh, it's just it's not a good feeling. It's it's just uh, I I hate it. I hate it is pretty much the best way to put it. Uh, but what is you know some of the things that make me happy? Uh, listen to Kurt Cobain. Hey, speaking of Kurt Cobain, I'm gonna be in his home state and. Uh, I don't know if I'll get a chance to go to see his house or not because I, the way I scheduled my trip and my sister said if you had, you know, scheduled during this part of the week off and, you know, we could have maybe done it, but we're going to be working these days. And it's like, ah, oh, well, that's just great. You tell me now. But, but hey, I'll be in his home state. I mean, I, I would like to go to his uh, house and get his my picture taken there. I mean, uh, I was definitely supporting a Nirvana shirt while I'm out there. <laughs> And a Dan Daniel Bryan shirt too, since he's from Aberdeen, Washington as well. But both both guys are who I, I I mean I like wrestling. I've admitted that as well. Uh, my favorite musician and my my favorite current wrestler both from Aberdeen, Washington. What are the odds of that, right? Uh, interesting. I mean I like I just Daniel Bryan is just a he's like the underdog that overcame all the all, over overcame all the odds. And it's just, I relate, try to relate myself to him because he's not the biggest guy, but, you know, he still got the main event, WrestleMania, and win the title and, you know, be that guy for them, you know, and that's how you should want to be for yourself. You want to be that person to, you know, represent, uh, you know, your family, your your friends, your job, you know, in a, in a positive manner too. And, and you want to, you want to be able to, share that with others and you want to be able to uh not only share that but pass that along and and give that energy that positive energy and vibe to others and you know people will want to be around you more and that will make you more successful uh i mean i'm not trying to be a uh a life coach here but i'm just trying to you know i'm just trying to how say how i relate to daniel bryan and you know i it's just the small things. I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily, I don't make much as much money as him by any means, but you know, uh, but as a person, I could still be just as rich as him in terms of like, uh, you know, the quality of my character and such. So, I mean, that's what I got to strive for. And that's what everyone should strive for. You know, the money isn't everything granted. Yes, it is good to have not going to lie. I mean, that's sometimes probably sometimes the source of my stress too, you know, just, I mean, I don't have money issues, but I just don't have enough money just to make me feel at ease more often than I, you know, more often than as I would like to be. But, you know, uh, you know, it's, if, you know, my dad always said, if you're a liar, you know, if your word's no good, then you're no good. And, you know, the, your name is, uh, when you're born, the name, when you, the, the last name you have is, uh, like doesn't have any marks on it. It's unmarked, and what you do with it uh, is up to you. And if your word's no good, then you're no good. Your name's no good. Everyone knows, you know, if they say, be like, oh, Leighton Harmon, oh, well, yeah, Harmon, not a good name. Yeah, he does, you know, he stole my, I'm, I'm not that I, I'm not, I didn't steal mine, but I'm just saying, or, you know, that guy, uh, He's a shady character, you know, he's, he screwed me over, or, you know, I don't want to be that, and I never want to, and I have never have. I'm not saying I'm a perfect person by any means, but uh, I, honestly, I do the right thing. I know that's probably hard, that could be hard for people to believe, but, uh, you know, if someone had a $100 bill sitting on the table while I walked in their house and they weren't there, I, I wouldn't touch it. I mean, it's not mine. I don't care how much money. If I worked, you know, uh, it's just, that's just the type of person I am. Uh, thank my parents for that. It's a, you know, a blessing and a curse, I suppose, whatever, which way you want to look at it. But, you know, no, it's just, be, you can count on me to do something. I mean, if I need help with, with trying to do something, I will ask someone for the help. But I mean, if you need help and I know how to do it or, or be like, hey, hey, I'll try to get this done. I'll do my best, you know. That's all, you know, I'm not going to let you down and, or, you know, I'll give everything I got. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, I mean, 
I guess I'm going out to a splash park, and I was like, oh, water park, oh, that'll be fun. Like, one of my sisters, she's like, no, no, splash park. So like, there's a difference between water and splash park, just to let you know that. Uh, I don't know how many minutes I'm going on now, but, oh, man, what have we talked about? And, like, how it's, uh, boy, I don't know what, see, sometimes I, I wonder why I can title these, because I just talk about whatever, whenever, what's going on in the, you know, news road, you know, such as Bruce Jenner, you know, that whole fiasco, and, you know, there'll probably be another one pretty soon, uh, what, you know, the next headline, but, you know, uh, this, this should, I, I want to go back on LeBron James because, you know, there's so many people, there were so many articles about debating all, uh, all I'd take LeBron over his, uh, Michael Jordan, both, both, uh, both in their primes or whatever, uh, or LeBron's better, LeBron's better, or Michael's better, Michael's better, uh, LeBron really has to step up in this NBA finals and, uh, you know, he can, he can uh, help solidify his claim to being the greatest of all time or help his support his case, definitely, if he wins this. I mean, he's without Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving, but he's going to have to have other players step up and do their role. And, you know, um, I mean, Michael Jordan didn't do it all himself, and neither is neither can LeBron James. That's what people need to realize, too. I mean, Michael Jordan was the leader of the Bulls. No, make no mistake about it. He was a star. He was, you know, the Bulls. Uh, without him, I mean, they made it to the Eastern Conference Final the one year. And, well, no, the two years. Well, they met the Knicks in 94. And then 1995, when he came back midway through the season, they lost to the Orlando Magic in the Conference Finals. I can't remember if they lost the Conference Finals, though, to the Knicks. I'm not sure. I don't think they did, but. Yeah, it just goes to show, uh, you know, when Michael Jordan was, when he was there to lead the team from the get-go, and uh, at the end of his career with the Bulls, he, uh, the, they were, they were untouchable, untouchable, uh-huh, get it? Yeah, a little lame pun there, but I guess I'll end my podcast there, uh, again, uh, I hope you enjoy, uh, it, I hope you enjoyed it, uh. I will leave a link in the description to my Facebook page and my Twitter account so, you know, you can follow me on there and get the latest updates of, you know, if I, when I post a new video, a new podcast, or if I just share some funny fo- photos from other uh, Facebook pages and such, or, you know, Twitter, you can catch me on there just, you know, talking sports or anything, uh, you'll follow me on there if you feel free. Like I said, I'll leave the links in the description to this uh, podcast and you can check them out. So with that said, as always, I'm Nam, and always use your noodle.